First thing first, guys, how are you? How are you? Good, Very How are you? I'm all right, thank you. Good. So where I want to start with is uh, about a month ago you played, a, and I have to read this, but you played a show at King John's Castle in Limerick. That's right. And then uh, you're all from the Limerick area at least. So, so what, was that, what did that show mean to you? Uh, it's, it's probably our biggest gig to date um, in terms of it's our hometown. So, uh, you know, it's the most important show for us in a way that we like to go home to where you're from and play in front of your home audience and your friends and family. Um, and it's a very kind of historic location in our city. So it's, uh, it's amazing when you're up on a stage in a medieval castle, uh, looking out across your city with a couple of thousand people there. So it was a, it was a really enjoyable experience. And yeah, we, we couldn't have been happier to do it. And it went really well. Does it bring back memories of, of when you started? And then, especially when you're back home, you see pubs where you played and... It's funny, our, our old, we're brothers and our, our older brother owns a pub in Limerick mm. and that's where we started playing. We used to have a jam session in the corner of the pub and then we worked our way up to playing there every Sunday night <laughs> and slowly building a crowd from five people up to fill in the place. But that bar is, just like a hundred meters away from the castle, okay. so you could see it from the stage. Okay. And it was really nice, it was, it was also a Sunday night when we were playing the castle, and I was saying to the crowd, trying to explain to people that you don't realize that we started out there just four years ago playing to mm -hmm. five or 10 people, and now we get to come up and do it here on a huge stage in front of lots of people, it's pretty cool. And like you say, uh, you, you started only four years, uh, well, a little bit uh, before that, but not so long ago, but and then all of you kind of started careers in different areas. So, so was that passing for music always there uh, from early on? Yeah, um, neither of us would have played as kids and we didn't come from a musical family. Um, I started playing music when I was 15. And once I took it up then, it, well, I took it quite seriously from then on. But as, as kids, I don't think either of us were particularly Musical. I would have list, listened to a lot of music as a kid, mm. like I think, uh, and we would all be the same, the five of us, I think we'd all been very into music growing up and very different genres of music, uh, and you can hear that in our own music where it's, mm. it's completely random sometimes, it's folk, it's heavier, sometimes it's uh, quiet, laid back love songs, and sometimes they're dance songs and stuff, mm. so yeah, there's a nice mix and blend of all our interests and experiences throughout our lives. That's what comes out of the music. Because Ireland does have a, quite a rich musical tradition, so did you grow up with all, all of uh, uh, the folk music and, and then, like you said, not, the not us particularly. The other, a few of the other lads would have grown up with a lot of the traditional influences in music and folk influences. Mine were definitely pop and more rock and uh, from the America and from the, U the UK, I think. Um, but yeah, there's an incredible tradition in Ireland for folk music, traditional Irish music, and a lot of, you know, great singers, songwriters, and storytellers. Um, but I think in this modern day, we're definitely getting to see the fruits of European music, American music, and the influences that has, because Ireland being in the center of it all, we've had, you know, we're quite a little hub for, I think, a lot of that, those influences from other countries. And, well, like I say, you, you both, started somewhere else not necessarily pursuing music so how did you end up uh, being I, I don't know how, how it felt for you but being kind of slowly sucked into that whole music thing as a band mm -hmm. it was kind of it was serendipitous we, it was accidental that we ended up mm -hmm. being the band we just were a couple of mates that used to meet up in my brother's pub as I mentioned and we would have a jam session there once a week and then I guess we, we all enjoy doing it together so much as a group that one thing led to another and here we are <laughs> eight years later as a professional outfit now mm. with a couple of albums released and we're traveling the world and I think because it had its roots in something as organic as a couple of friends playing music out of a love for playing music and nothing else no kind of external motives like money or girls or whatever, you know, those like superficial, <laughs> <laughs> superficial, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, 
But yeah, does that make sense? Sure. Mm. Uh, can you take me back then to, to one of those early early sessions or, or nights? Or how, how did you end up playing music together? Did, was it just, oh, there's a guitar, I'll it play was, something, you sing something? It was actually one night we were, at, we were out and we bumped into each other. We were out separately. I was with one of my friends, he was with one of his friends. And we went for a pint and I, my friend, I'd lived with him and we were playing some music together. He, his friend, they were playing music together and we said, why don't we get together some night? And we, all, we were all athletes at the time. We were, mm. Dan was a boxer, I was a rugby player, one of the lads was an, um, a sprinter. Mm. So we all had a lot of downtime on our hands and uh, the evenings sometimes can be long when you're into sport or training and stuff. So we just got together on a Monday night, I think it was the first night, and started playing over a pot of tea in the back of this pub. And we just play traditional songs or instrumental songs and back each other. And, then the following week we went back and we played again and some people started showing up to hear us play and at that stage we just kind of put together a set list of 10 or 12 songs and just kept playing them over and over and so over a couple of months it developed and it was it was fun like the windows would steam up like mm. fog up with the amount of people that would pack in there and there'd be just pints flowing and whiskey flowing and we'd turn off the lights sometimes we'd play some dance covers like what was this uh, sweet dreams, oh, sweet by dreams by the Eurythmics and stuff right. and get glow sticks and stuff <laughs> but there were still acoustic instruments no microphones so it was absolute fun man it was just pure uh, crack we call it in Ireland it's mm. Irish for fun that's all it was it was just fun and uh, <laughs> I don't think it is isn't it crack is Irish for fun crack it was cool I've, I've heard it uh, many times before so yeah I, there I, you I, I, I get it it's one, I, I don't it's know one of many I mean, words we had for fun. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard it before. Uh, so yeah, that's how we started and then it was, uh, it's gotten a bit more serious I suppose throughout the years with traveling and we signed with Sony for a couple of years we were, and uh, things get a little bit more serious but I think we're still, the heart of it is fun and enjoyment with your friends. Because of the, that, that thing, um, especially you mentioned Sony with the, with the label coming in, is it difficult to, to keep it as fun as, as it was, uh, if, you, if you know what I mean? Yeah, it, can, it, it was back then, I think, uh, when we first uh, signed, it was, um, I think the pressure came on a little bit more, external pressures probably, and you're dealing with different people then who have a stake in what you're doing, whereas normally it's just the five of us, that's all that matters is, you know, what we feel and what we think, but then you've other people coming in and giving their opinion and pulling you in a certain direction and uh, that was confusing and a weird time for sure for all of us and uh, it challenged us a lot but I think we've come through that and, and I still think stayed true to what we really wanted and um, we've learned massively from those experiences as well. So, and those, you know, they were good times, the people in Sony were great, they were lovely people but it's, it's just it's something delicate you're dealing with when mm. I think you've, you, you, you introduce stuff like that. Right. And I, I want to go uh, back a little bit to, the, to those years in between uh, kind of when you started and, and that Sony deal because the, you did a lot of touring. What did those years mean as a, to, to you as a band? Uh, how important were they to, to be on the road, to be in a van to, together? And it's, it's very important, I'd say. Um, I think as far as the music is concerned, you, you learn a lot about your songs when you play them to a room full of people, particularly an audience that has never heard them before, or an audience that don't speak English, or an audience of drunk Irish people in <laughs> Australia that are away from home, and you know, see what triggers with them, what resonates mm. with them, and you learn a lot about your songs from that. You learn what works and what maybe goes over people's heads. And that was something very important that we honed over the course of four or five years of just doing that taking all the gigs we could get and touring all over the world and it makes you very tight together uh, in terms of the way you play together and probably spiritually as well <laughs> but uh, it's I'd say it's integral like it's it's really really important for a band to do especially at that kind of seminal development period like of the first couple of years mm. and especially obviously as, as brothers you spend a lot of time together but uh, being in this group and, and being on the road what's how has, has it changed your relationship? Yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> we kill each other at times. <laughs> um, yeah, we're not, the, we're not the Gallagher brothers, basically, from Oasis. We're not, we're not like that. But um, 
Yeah, we shared a room for 15 years. Like we grew up in a small house that we were, so we were in each other's faces since day one. Um, so, uh, and that goes for all of us, all right. five of us, we challenge each other all the time. Brothers maybe were a little bit more sensitive to each other, uh, and or insensitive to each other. We can just spit things out. <laughs> But, um, we sing in harmony, but that's about the only thing that's harmonious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everything else is, is disharmony. Uh, but it's nice. It's great to do something with your family, and, and our parents are quite involved as well. Our dad comes on the road with us and stuff like that, and uh, and our mother as well sometimes. So it, yeah, it's cool.